Hello everyone. I am Vimani Kondan, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Science Engineering, Government College of Engineering, Salem 11. In this lecture video, we will discuss about Big Data. We all use smartphones. But have you ever wonder how much data it generates in the form of texts, phone calls, emails, photos, videos, searches and music approximately 40 exabytes of data gets generated every month by a single smartphone user now imagine this number multiplied by 5 billion smartphone users that's a lot for our mind to even process isn't it in fact this amount of data is quite a lot for traditional computing systems to handle and this massive amount of data is what we term as Big data. Let's have a look at the data generated per minute. On the internet, 2.1 million snaps are shared on Snapchat. 3.8 million search queries are made on Google. 1 million people log on to Facebook. 4.5 million videos are watched on YouTube. 188 million emails are sent. That's a lot of data. How do you classify any data as big data? This is possible with the concept of Volume, velocity, variety, veracity, value. Let us understand this with an example from the healthcare industry. Hospitals and clinics across the world generate massive volumes of data. 2,314 exabytes of data are collected annually in the form of patient records and test results. All this data is generated at a very high speed which attributes to the velocity of big data variety refers to the various data types such as structured semi-structured and unstructured data examples include Excel records log files and x-ray images accuracy and trustworthiness of the generated data is termed as veracity Analyzing all this data will benefit the medical sector by enabling faster disease detection, better treatment and reduced cost. This is known as the value of big data. But how do we store and process this big data? To do this job, we have various framework such as Cassandra, Hadoop and Spark. Let us take Hadoop as an example and see how Hadoop stores and processes big data Hadoop uses a distributed file system known as Hadoop distributed file system to store big data if you have a huge file your file will be broken down into smaller chunks and stored in various machines not only that when you break the file you also make copies of it which goes into different nodes this way you store your big data in a distributed way and make sure that even if one machine fails your data is safe on another MapReduce technique is used to process big data a lengthy task a is broken into smaller tasks b c and d now instead of one machine three machines take up each task and complete it in a parallel fashion and assemble the results at the end thanks to this the processing becomes easy and fast this is known as parallel processing now that we have stored and processed our big data we can analyze this data for numerous applications in games like Halo 3 and Call of Duty designers analyze user data to understand at which stage most of the users pause restart or quit playing this insight can help them rework on the storyline of the game and improve the user experience which in turn reduces the customer churn rate Support only in big data.
Evolution of Big Data Data has evolved in the last five years. Like never before, lots of data is being generated. Each day in every business sector, why are organizations interested in big data? Data has evolved in last five years like never before. Lots of data is being generated. Each day in every business sectors like Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, YouTube, U of e-commerce, and various portals. Say eBay, Amazon, Flipkart, Alibaba.com. And then, you have various tech giants, such as Google, Oracle, SAP, Amazon, Microsoft, and so on so. Lots of data is getting generated every day, in every business sector. The point here is that organizations have slowly started realizing that they would be interested in working on all the data. Here are some facts to convince you that data is exploding and need your attention. It's 55 billion messages and 4.5 billion photos are sent each day on WhatsApp. $300 of video are uploaded every minute on YouTube. Did you guys know that? YouTube is the second largest search engine after Google. Every minute user send 31.25 million messages and watch 2.77 million videos on Facebook. Walmart handles more than 1 million customer transactions every hour. Google 40,000 search queries are performed on Google per second. That is 3.46 million searches a day. In fact you could also say that a lot of times people when they're loading up the Google page is basically just to check their internet connection. However that is also generating data. IDC reports that by 2025 real-time data will be more than a quarter of all the data. And by 2025 the volume of digital data will increase to $163. That is we are not even talking about gigabytes or terabytes. Anymore we are talking about petabytes, exabytes, and zettabytes. And cedar bytes means 10 to the power 21 bytes. So this is how data has evolved. Now you can talk about different companies which would want to use their data to take business decisions. They would want to collect the data, store it, and analyze it. And that's how they would be interested in drawing insights for the business example about facebook and what it does to work on the data now before we go to facebook you could always check in google by just typing in companies using big data and if we say companies using big data we should be able to find a list of different companies which are using big data for different use cases there are various sources from where you can find we could also search for solution that is. It's just one example of what Facebook does with its data. Take an example of photo tag suggestions. Now when you log into Facebook account, you could also get suggestions on different friends who you would like to connect to or you would want to tag so that they could be known by others. Some more examples which show how Facebook uses its data are as follows. So the flashback collection of photos and posts that receive the most comments and likes. Okay there was something called as I voted that was used for 2016 elections with reminders and directions to tell users their time and place of polling. Also something called a safety checks in incidents such as earthquake hurricane or mass shooting Facebook gives you safety checks now these are some examples where Facebook is using big data example where we discussed about one company which is making use of that data which has been accumulated and it's not only for companies which are social media oriented like Facebook where data is important take an example of IBM take an example of JP Morgan Chase they've been taking example of GE or any other organization which is 
collecting huge amount of data. They would all want to gather insights. They would want to analyze the data. They would want to be more precise in building their services or solutions which can take care of their customers. So what is big data? Big data is basically a term. It is used to describe the data that is too large and complex to store and traditional databases. And as I give an example, it's not just about storing the data. It is also about what you can do with the data. It also means that if there is a lot of dynamism involved, can you change the underlying storage and handle any kind of data that comes in now before we get into that? Let's just understand what is big data. So big data is basically a term which is being given to categorize the data if it has different characteristics organizations would want to have the big data stored processed and then analyze big data is a term to describe data that is too large and complex to store in traditional databases and it is used to store the data process the data analyze it now there are five V's of big data, volume, velocity, variety, value, velocity. Although these are five V's, but then there are other ways which also categorize big data, such as volatility, validity, viscosity, virility of data. Okay, so these are five V's of big data. And if the data has one, or all of these characteristics, then it can be considered as big data. Basically means incredible amount of data, huge volumes of data, data generated every second. Now that could be used for batch processing, that could be used for real time stream processing. Okay, you might have data being generated from different kind of devices, like your cell phones, your social media websites, online transactions, variable devices, servers in these days. With IoT, we are also talking about data of getting generated via internet of things that is you could have different devices which could be communicating to each other. You could be getting data from radars or leaders or even camera sensors big data speed with generated think about stock markets think about social media websites think about online service or marketing campaigns or airline industry so if the data is getting changed with a lot of speed where it becomes difficult to capture collect process cure mine or analyze the data then we are Certainly talking about big data. The next aspect of big data is variety. Now this is where we talk about structured data, semi-structured data, or unstructured data. And here I would like to ask a question. What is the difference? When do you call the data structured, semi-structured, or unstructured? Now let's look at an example. Before we theoretically discuss about this, next aspect is value. Now, value refers to the ability to turn your data useful for business. You would have a lot of data which is being collected, as we mentioned in previous slides. Right there would be a lot of data wrangling or data pre processing or cleaning up of data happening, and then Finally, you would want to draw value from that data, but from all the data collected, what percentage of data gives us value? And if all my data can give me value, then why wouldn't I use it? This is an aspect of big data veracity. Now, this means the quality of data. Billions of dollars are lost every year by organizations because the data which was collected was not a good quality or probably the collected lot of data and then it was erroneous take an example of autonomous driving projects 
which are happening in Europe, or US, where there are car seats, which are on the road, collecting data via radar, sensors, and cameras, sensors and when this data has to be processed, to train, algorithms, it is realized that sometimes the data, which was collected was missing, in some values might be was not appropriate, or had a lot of errors, and all this process of collecting the data, becomes a repetitive task because the quality, of data was not good. We would like to, talk on a big data, case study, and we have taken an example of Google, which obviously is, one of the companies, which is turning, and working, on a huge amount of data. Now it's actually said, that if you compare one grain of sand with one byte of data then google is processing or google is handling whole world sand every week that is the kind of data which google is processing now in early 2000 and since then when the number of internet users started growing google also faced a lot of problems in storing increasing user data and are using the traditional service to manage that now that was a challenge which Google started facing could they use traditional data server to store the data well yes they could write so it is devices have been getting cheaper day by day but then how much time does it take to retrieve that data what is the seek time what is the time taken to read and process that data thousands of search queries were raised per second no doubt now we could say millions and billions of queries are raised per second every query read 100 MBs of data and consumed tens of billions of CPU cycles based on these queries so the requirement was that they wanted to have a large distributed highly fault tolerant file system large to store to capture process huge amount of data distributed because they could not rely just on one server even if that had multiple disks stacked up that was not an efficient choice what would happen if this particular machine failed what would happen if the whole server was down so they needed a distributed storage and a distributed computing environment they needed something which can be highly fault tolerant right so this was the requirement which Google had and the solution which came out as a result was GFS Google file system now let's look at how GFS works so normally in any particular length system or Linux server you would have a file system you would have set up processes you would have set of files and directories which could store the data GFS was different so to facilitate GFS which could store huge amount of data there was an architecture an architecture which had one master and multiple chunk servers or you could say slave service or slave machines master machine was to contain metadata was to contain data about data and we said metadata we are talking about information about data and then you have the chunk servers or the slave machines which could be storing data in a distributed fashion now any client or an API or an application which would want to read the data but first contact the master server it would contact the machine where the master process was running and client would place a request of reading the data or showing an interest of reading the data internally what it is doing is it is requesting for metadata your API or an application would want to know from where it can read the data master server which is metadata whether that is in RAM or disk we can discuss that later but then master server would have the metadata and it would know which are the chunk servers or the slave machines where the data was stored in a distributed fashion master would respond back with the metadata information to the client and then client could use that information to read or write to these slave machines where actually the data was stored now this is what the process 
or set of processes work together to make GFS. So when you say a tongue server, we would basically have the files getting divided into fixed size chunks. Now how would they get divided? So they would be some kind of chunk size or a block size, which you would determine that if the file is bigger than the pre-decided chunk size, then it would be split into smaller chunks and be distributed across the chunk servers or the slave machines. If the file was smaller, then it would still use one chunk or a block to get stored on the underlying slave machines. So these 10 servers, machines, are the ones which actually store the return local disks as your Linux files, client which is interacting with the master for metadata. And then, Interacting with junk servers for retired operations would be the one which would be externally connecting to the cluster. So this is how it would look so. You have a master which would obviously be receiving some kind of heartbeats from the chunk servers to know their status and receive information in the form of packets which would let the master know which machines were available for storage, which machines already had data, and master would build up the metadata within itself. The files would be broken down into tongues. For example we can look at file 1 it is broken down into chunk 1 and chunk 2 and file 2 has one chunk which is one portion of it and then you have file to decide on some other chunk server which also lets us know that there is some kind of auto replication for this file system right and the data which is getting stored in the chunk could have a data of 64 megabytes now that some size could be changed based on the data size but google file system had the basic size of the chunk at 64 megabytes each time would dedicate it on multiple servers the default application was 3, and that could again be increased, or decreased, as per requirement. This would also mean that, if a particular slave machine or a chunk server, would die, or would get killed, or would crash, there would never be any data loss, because a replica of data, residing on a failed machine, would still be available on some other slave, server chunk server, or slip machine. Now this helped Google to store and process huge volumes of data in a distributed manner and does have a fault tolerant distributed scalable storage which could allow them to store huge amount of data. Challenges of big data LL is a loop. Now when we talk about big data here I would like to ask you some questions that if we were talking about the rdbms case take an example of something like nasa which was working on a project called seti search of extraterrestrial intelligence now this was a project where they were looking for a solution to take care of their problem the problem was that they would roughly send some waves in space capture those waves back and then analyze this data to find if there was any extraterrestrial object in space or they had two options for it they could either have a huge server belt which could take care of storing the data and processing it or they could go for volunteer computing and volunteer computing basically means that you could have a lot of people volunteering and being part of this project and what they would in turn do as they would be donating their RAM and storage from their machines when they're not using it how would that happen basically download some kind of patch on their machine which would run as a screensaver and if the user is not using his machine some portion of data could be transferred to these machines for intermittent storage and processing using lab now this sounds very interesting and this sounds are very easy however it would have its own challenges Right think about security think about integrity but those those problems are not bigger as much as is the requirement of bandwidth 
and this is the same thing which happens in RDBMS. If you would have to move data from archived solution to the processing layer, that would consume huge amount of bandwidth. Dictator brings its own challenges huge amount of data is getting generated every day. Now the biggest challenge is storing this huge volume of data and especially when this data is getting generated with lot of variety when it can have different kind of formats where it could be vital it could be having a lot of value and nobody has looked into the velocity of data but the primary problem would be handling this huge volume of data variety of the data would bring in challenges of storing it in legacy systems if processing of the data was required now here again i would suggest you need to think what is the difference between reading a data and processing it so reading might just mean bringing in the data from desk and doing some io operations and processing would mean reading the data probably doing some transformations on it extracting some useful information from it and then storing it in the same format or probably in a different format so processing this massive volume of data is the second challenge organizations don't just store their big data they would eventually want to use it to process it together some insights now processing and extracting insights from big data would take huge amount of time unless and until there was an efficient solution to handle and process this big data securing the data that's again a concern for organizations right encryption of big data is difficult to perform if you would think about different compression mechanisms then that would also mean decompressing of data which would also mean that you could take a hit on the cpu cycles or on disk usage providing user authentication for every team member of that would also be dangerous thank you everyone by v mani condon department of computer science and engineering government college of engineering salem 11